I'm in Portugal and I've been riding the new Triumph T120 Bonneville. Icon is an overused word, Triumph said at the launch presentation for the Bonneville T120 before using it to describe the bike we're about to ride. It's okay because this one really is an icon, they said. It is an overused word, but the Bonneville seems to deserve the description more than most. As traditional bikes go, what has more credibility than a machine that still looks so much like it did in 1959? The Bonneville looked this way before traditional was even traditional. With no big updates for several years, the Bonneville had somehow found itself in danger of getting left behind by the retro scene, hence a whole new Bonneville range for 2016 with, li with liquid-cooled engines. With this one, Triumph says it has aimed to preserve the look of the original 1959 T120. So the parallel twin engine retains a similar shape in profile, leaving big enough gaps through the frame to stick a hand in. The throttle bodies look like carburettors, the cylinders retain machine fins, the brushed aluminium engine cases have inspection covers, which are real, and it's covered in chrome, unless you go for the T120 black, which has matte black everywhere instead. That's the one I rode with matte graphite bodywork. The exhaust has two skins, so from the side it looks like a simple pea shooter, while a hidden section diverts through a catalytic converter. It goes on sale alongside the new Thruxton and Street Twin. Like the Thruxton, it's got a 1200cc engine where the entry level street, street Twin is 900. The T120 has what Triumph calls the high torque version of the 1200 plant, where the Thruxton is high power. It still makes less peak torque than the Thruxton, with 77.4 pounds foot instead of 82.6, but it makes it lower in the range, right down at 3,100 RPM compared to 4,950. Peak power is 80 horsepower at 6,550 RPM compared to the Thruxton's 97 horsepower at 6,750. Both machines redline at 7,000. So it's not so much high torque as a big wallop of it as soon as you open the throttle. With so much low down, there isn't really a pressing need to push to the red line. I found the engine most likeable at about 5,000 RPM where it's getting nearer the peak power but still feels completely unstressed, eager, effortless and capable of good progress. I'm not an expert on 1959 Bonnevilles, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say they didn't have a button on the left hand handlebar with an I on it, nor one on the right bar with an M on it. The I is the button for selecting information you want to see on the digital insert in the twin dial dash, including current and average fuel consumption, raise to empty, and a gear indicator. The M button is to choose between two riding modes, road and rain. It's also got ABS as standard and traction control, which can be switched off. With peak torque so low down, traction control is probably a good idea, likely to save a few people from a moment of clumsiness exiting a damp corner. Likewise, the rain mode, which gives you a softer throttle response. There's a third button, I'll gamble, also wasn't on a 1959 model for the latest version's heated grips, located on the collar of the left hand grip itself. They're standard equipment on the new T120, as they clearly should be on all bikes, and they're pretty good. There's only two levels, but that's all you need. The launch was cold enough for a jumper and thermal lining, but my hands were warm in summer gloves. Triumph describes this, the suspension as developed for an engaging yet easy going riding experience. It's softish, a little bouncy, authentically traditional you might say, but certainly comfortable. Riding straight through potholes or over speed humps is not an inconvenience. It's got slightly more travel than the outgoing model. The seat is also generously padded, soft and comfortable. And the seat height is fairly low at 785 millimeters. And the bars are high, so your forearms are near horizontal. While other manufacturers have long since switched to giving us wet weight figures instead of dry, Triumph still sticks to the latter. With this bike's claim 224 kilograms, you can see why they'd use any means available to diminish the impression of weight. But it really doesn't feel as heavy as that figure suggests. It's got a low center of gravity revealed by the ease with which you can lean it over at a standstill. And it also turns with the ease of a lighter bike on the move. It's got the same tubular steel main frame as the Thruxton and Thruxton R, but with a different welded on subframe and an utterly different feel. The high bars and 18 inch front wheel don't put you as in touch with the tarmac as they do on the Thruxton. The brakes, twin front discs and two piston Nissan calipers at both ends are more than competent with good progressive power through the span adjustable lever. That's what makes the, the Bonneville T120 a nice experience, the shiny bits, the beautiful engine, the rubber grips on the side of the tank, the genuine period feel. Above all, it manages to put you in a good mood. It's not a traditional looking bike given some modern performance like the Thruxton R, it's a faithful recreation of a classic motorcycle or as near as can be got to it using modern technology. 
The odd thing undermines the impression, as on the Thruxton R, I wonder if the handlebar switch gear couldn't look a little bit more from 1959 instead of straight from 2016. But overall, it seems to recreate the things about an old bike that I imagine made them good while taking bad bits out and adding some mod cons and safety. There's a torque assist clutch so your wrist doesn't seize up. It's got 10,000 mile service intervals, increasing 6,000. It's got a sixth gear, which there was hardly a chance to use on the morning test ride on twisty roads and which seems quite tall. The ignition lock has been moved to the right place between the handlebar and clocks. It's got LED lights. It's even got a USB charging socket. Try telling that to a classic bike enthusiast. He'll say it's got a you and me what pocket. It's got a centre stand which is handy in any era. And starting from 9,600, it's a lot more expensive than Ducati's popular 800cc scrambler which starts from 7,250. That could be a problem for it, but I don't think so. People who want a Bonneville will want a Bonneville, not a foray into the land of joy.